Welcome to the Bernie Kosar Show with our legendary Cleveland quarterback himself and alongside the top dog, Hanford Dixon. Oh yeah, fellas. I'm Gabriella Cruz. We got Big Play Dave, our main show producer here. And of course, Angry Ken is in Mm. the house. We even have a live studio audience here today. (laughs) Just one. Chris McNeil, Reflog, the the icon. Reflog, making it in, young man. Big dog. The meme master. Okay, boys, uh, Browns, we're, we're losing four in a row here. We're two and five. Initial reactions from the game. I'm literally sick. If you'd have told me Lamar Jackson, top dog, would have been <laughs> 9 for 16, 120 yards. If you'd have told me Mark Andrews would have zero catches, Jacoby Brissett would be 22 for 27 for 258 yards, I would have thought for sure that the Cleveland Browns would be 3-4 and four today. To be sitting here at 2-5 and five and having only a 6% chance of getting into the playoffs, I think I'm literally sick today. Well, I, I, I agree with you. I'm sick, too, because you look at this ball game. I mean, uh, you're right. Talked about Lamar under 200 total yards uh, as far as passing and rushing. I think he only, you talk about the passing yards. I think he only had – he rushed for 59 yards. But, uh, you know, this our team, is, we're missing something. Obviously, we're missing something. We've lost uh, four in a row, and this was an important game. I mean, this game was very, very important. Not only was uh, – uh, it's a team in our division, AFC North. But also, when you look at the division right now, the way it is, we were right there. We're still right there. As as crazy as our record looked right now before this ball game, we're right there. And the thing is, if we could have got past the uh, Baltimore Ravens and then we have Cincinnati coming in our house on Monday night and somehow uh, win that game, boy, I tell you what, things look a lot better uh, today. Yeah, the... The sick feeling right now, the pit within the stomach, to be sitting here at two and five, to see the, see the issues within our division, to know that that division is ripe for the taking. That game was ripe for the taking yesterday. They have the same inconsistencies, the miscommunications, the, the lack of execution. You know, I, uh, we use this phrase a lot. How you do little things is how you do all things. You know and what? we're not doing little things at all. The attention to detail is Angry Ken putrid. might have something to say about this, too. What, yeah. where's, 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 that angry, so? where's that angry Ken meter? Hey, I'm going to need more of my CBD drink here. After <laughs> all that. right, after all right. Games like this. Let, let's get to it. 55 years of being a fan just when you think you've seen it all you haven't i want to wear the victory chain but i can't you know why because our head coach is a robot we have no emotion and the team has no emotion we are a running team that tries to pass as a result of that my head continues to explode speaking of the head coach we'll be chatting about him in our opening drive so let's get right into our opening drive it was an awesome first drive to kick it off we're gonna look at nick chubb's touchdown run uh he had five carries and one catch on this opening drive we want to see what you guys think what makes this play work and we want to talk about stefanski too because it looked like he opened really well you know when you start and you talk about an opening drive we had an 11 play drive to get a touchdown Six of those 11 plays included Nick Chubb. Five carries, one pass reception. That's our recipe for success within the offense. A steady diet of Nick Chubb. And when you look at it, I mean, you look at those, uh, when you start the game, I mean, obviously on the first two drives, the first two possessions, we had the football. I mean, we came out and we put points on the board. And I tell you what, you're going to look at this particular play, Bernie, and I'll let you break it down a little bit on offense. But Nick came through there un touch you're talking about a guy he was averaging i think throughout the ball game over almost six yards a carry yeah we go 16 carries for 91 yards 5.7 yards a carry we were worried and um of uh, Wyatt Teller, our right guard, being out for this game. Um, Coach Callahan um, has done a phenomenal job throughout his whole career, but what he's been able to do with our offensive line. And this this is a, a, a power uh 36 power O, where you're pulling both guards here. And look at, look at just the, the, the physicalness of our offensive line, making, getting, getting pushed at the line of scrimmage. I mean, it's almost, a, uh, it's almost impossible in a rarity in the NFL that you have a walk-in touchdown like this uh, in goal line personnel like this. This is 
Um, hats off to our team and probably a microcosm of what we want to see more of in the running game. Because when you're able to physically dominate it and a defensive line, a front seven, like the Baltimore Ravens there, you need to do it more. Well, I'm sitting over here laughing because, uh, you know, I was because I was thinking of myself. You talk about why Teller not being in the game and and uh, the guy who replaced him, I got to call his name. I think it was Froho. Froho, I think that's his name, Froho. But he did an outstanding, uh, my point is he did an outstanding job. And and a lot of people don't know, I mean, this guy, I mean, he's just got a big body, squats a lot. Uh, uh, and we used him a lot before this ball game. We used to l- use him a lot coming to the ball game as a, a fullback. Yeah, you come and, in as yeah, a fullback and yeah. goal line short yard. Yeah, yes. yeah, we used him a lot there, but his name is Froho. And uh, <laughs> Gabby, I think I got that right. Yeah. Froho, that's his name. Okay. <laughs> okay, one other name here. What do you think about Stefanski? The opening drive looked good. Maybe he's not able to adapt as the game continues. Do you think it's a player issue? Is it Stefanski? What are your thoughts? Well, from a from a personnel issue and from a coaching issue, and just from the beginning of the game is at the opening drive. This has been a theme through Coach Stefanski's um, reign as the, as the head coach and play caller. He does a, an exceptional job of scripting plays early in the game, the personnel groups, the motions, the shifts, and the play calling. Being And you can see in just about all of our games, we're starting out with, yes, the running game, but those motions and shifts by by figuring out ways to get the tight ends in the short passing game into it. Um, I also use that philosophy, though, Top Dog. I love how we're uh, almost X's and O's chess matching out scheming him, but it's almost tricking him. And I love that. I'm not against that at all. But it's hard to out trick, out scheme somebody for all four quarters. But we are doing that masterfully at the beginning of dr- yeah. at the beginning of game. Yeah, and I think they get too smart. I think they, I, I think he, uh, because Gabby, you hit on an excellent point. Because uh, and Bernie, you're right on those scripted plays. I mean, when we start the ball game, those plays are just right on. They're they're right there and and they're moving down the field. And and when you look at it, I think six of those plays, like you said, went to uh, Nick, Nick Chubb, Chubb or Nick Chubb was involved in, in uh, six of those plays. But as the game progresses, I, I think we start to uh, overthink it, outsmart ourselves because it's not rocket scientists. We are a running football team primarily, especially now with Jacoby at the uh, quarterback. And I'm not saying anything bad about him. We're going to get it in him. I think I thought he played an excellent uh, game yesterday. But we have to run the football, and we have to continue to run the football. And when we do that, we – move the football right Good. down the field. So, guys, this is what's on the mind of fans all around town and why I'm so angry. We Great job scripting those early plays. Do we script what to do in the fourth quarter? It's like we lose our identity. When we needed to run the ball in the second half, when that fourth quarter drive we needed, we went back to running the ball right down the field. But then when we get to the end of the game, and I know it's going to come up later, but just talk about it. Why do we what what's going on there? We lose our identity, Bernie. Do we panic? What what's going on? Well, I think sometimes um, we want to go to the end of the game right now from the opening drive, but there's a there's those type of questions that really materialize through the course of the whole game. I mean, coming out of we got the uh, the first drive of the third quarter coming out in halftime, where where. Um, again, we started the game in the first quarter. Nick Chubb, six of the first 11 plays, and we get a touchdown. We come out of the first drive into the third quarter, and we throw the ball three times, and we get a strip sack. So instead of coming on getting a dose of Nick Chubb again like we started the game, um, we're trying to maybe get too cute, trying to use too much of the yeah. creativity yeah. Yeah. instead of just that old school physicalness of coming, coming after you. And the same thing happens yeah. at the end of the game whether yeah. it was the L.A. Chargers, yeah. the Atlanta Falcons, where you're getting at the ball at the 40-yard line, the 36-yard line. Yesterday we had the ball basically inside the 30-yard the line where you, you need to solidify yeah. your points yeah. and your, um, and your and, um, successful, easier statistical field goals. And, and yeah. Ken, that's a great question. I mean, angry Ken, that is a great, great question because uh, – out of those scripted plays, I think what they do is, and Bernie, you can correct me uh, if I'm wrong, I think they run, they have a certain, about 15 plays that they're going to run, regardless of what's going on, they're pretty much going to run those plays. And then after that, BK, how, I mean, is there a number? How many plays do they really, when you see these coaches over there and they have that uh, big sheet with all the plays that they're going to call, talking about offensive coordinator, 
I mean, is how many plays is practically on that? Yeah, sheet? some so some of the really good um, old I used to call them the old West Coast Bill Walsh disciples from the old uh, San Francisco 49er days, they would go with as much as 20 plays, okay. 25 plays. Okay. Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan's father, would do almost 20 plays. Okay. The 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 most current disciple of, of that type of mindset is Andy Reid with the Kansas City Chiefs. He tends to do about 20 of those plays. I used to have some coaches that would want to do that many of them. You really better know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You better be on your damn game mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. do that. Because mm -hmm. I know coaches that would want to script 15 or 20 plays. And if you're scripting 15 or 20 plays and 12 of them suck, that's a massive problem for me. If you're yeah. Bill Walsh, yeah. Andy Reid, yeah. okay, I'm good with that. But there are some people that script plays just for the sake of scripting them. Because the defensive coordinators... They're doing the same thing. They know they're studying, too, so they're just not going to make it that easy for you. So I would like to sometimes script plays where I'd also um, not have it as chipped in granite. So I would also try to understand my third and three to five plays, my third and seven plus plays, my plays that I would use coming out of mm -hmm. the end zone, some yeah. of the plays I'd use going into the end zone. But Angry Ken, that was a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to switch gears, guys. We're going to go defense now because Hanford, it looks like maybe our cornerbacks aren't watching our show, at least not last week's. We're going to tee up this play here. Emerson, this coverage, DuVernay's catch over Emerson. Boy, Gabby, this is a great, great play, too. You're going to really get a chance to see uh, Emerson in action. You know, actually, guys, when you look at this particular play, I mean, he had pretty good coverage, pretty decent coverage. The only thing, if I was to say anything about him, give him a little bit of a hard time, he could have got more of him off the line of scrimmage. Did you see that uh, coming off the line of scrimmage? You see he just put his right hand out on him. He really didn't jam him, really didn't force him uh, 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 from his route. See, watch this. See how he just yes. put his hand on it and let him run? Because you're talking about a kid that's fast. I mean, this kid probably runs like a 4-2 something 40 yard dash and after this point watch him he's just going to run away from it and you have to give Lamar Bernie a lot of credit too because this is a I think this is a darn good throw Oh, this is better than a darn good throw. This is a perfect throw. The old Dan Marino line, you can't beat a perfect throw. This is actually as to your point Hanford, excellent coverage and a perfect throw. I would, uh, from the quarterback perspective and the route running perspective, to and Emerson covering here, for, back here at the beginning, to half to your point, when he hits his right hand with him, if he the, the receiver is actually not running a good release, so he takes himself to the sideline. He's actually almost taking himself out of the play. To Hanford's point, if he comes back at him with his right hand again before the five yards, he almost could push his push his ass out of bounds. Yeah. And that's yeah. absolutely the coaching point. Take him out of bounds. Yeah. Take him out of his play there. See, he could get him again. That's a legal push. You get him pressed up against the sideline. It takes away that ability to come back in and, and, and make that catch. And, and, and let me say this about Emerson. What he's got to do is he's got to take his feet. His feet, he's just got to shuffle his feet to the to his left right here when you see him going out. And that way he's going to get his jam, not just one hand on him. He's going to get both of his hands on the wide receiver. And that way you have him right where you want him. You, I, you now you get his hips. Yeah. You don't want to get his hips yeah. turned. Yeah, like you have him right where you want him. From yeah. a receiver standpoint, yeah. I am isolated on yeah. your hips. Yeah. I am going to make you and, turn those and, hips and get them and turned. And like you said, then what he could do is he could use the sideline yeah. as his friend. And just run him right, right out of right bounds. Look at back. But guys, play. talk a little bit. All right, so that's good technique on the defensive back there. We're doing better in coverage, but we can't stop the run. And that's going to be the Achilles heel for the rest of the season because we've got no push in the middle or we have just no – nobody's stout in the middle and our linebackers are being carried for five yards. Hanford, you're the defensive coordinator now. Is it technique? What do we do? I mean, we, we, this is our team. How do we stop the run? Because we got to stop the run. Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of a little bit of everything. When you look at Baltimore, I mean, yesterday, obviously, Baltimore liked to run the football. I think you look at them, I think they had a total of 160 yards uh, rushing the football yesterday. It's a little bit of everything. It's tackling, it's, it's, it's techniques, it's uh, being in your gaps when you're supposed gap to be in your gaps. Yeah. And, and it's also when you have to contain, you have to contain, you got to turn it in, reali realizing that your help is coming from the inside. But most of it is – 
I, I thought they did a better job yesterday than normally what we do, but Baltimore is just going to – I mean, they're just going to – Push it down your yeah, throat. The, They're going to run the, the ball. Yeah, for the physical presence, for the ability of the uh, Baltimore Ravens to have such a top-tier running yeah. running offense like they do. Uh, defensively, I thought our, our Cleveland Browns actually did did one of their better jobs this year from a defense perspective in terms of stopping a run. We're not we're not as big and stout up front as we want to be, so we still have a size physics issue working against us. And the Ravens do have a big physical offense, and unfortunately, they had Gus Edwards, their big between the tackles run yeah. rusher coming back yesterday. You know, he had 16 carries. 66 yards and that made it tough on us but still defensively that was a better performance in terms of stopping the run than we've done the last couple of weeks and i was kind of hoping these two guys didn't play they got two of their uh their tackles back stanley and uh right. moses but stanley I, I mean we all know this guy he's a top top not uh tackle but uh Still, our running game, we still got to be able to stop them, uh, Angry Ken, and we're just not doing it. And, right and now. the Greg Roman, uh, Gabby, your John, your John Carroll disciple, uh, their <laughs> offensive coordinator yesterday, um, they had to go to great lengths, yeah. too, to get some of these first downs and, and, and um, some of the rushing attempts. I mean, to have Mark Andrews lining up his yeah. quarterback yesterday, yeah. to have yeah. a fourth and one where Mark Andrews, they. They they try to they get us to, yeah, yeah they try yeah. to get us to jump offside with a, a tight end doing a hard count which is really good discipline by the Baltimore Ravens and then to get us into almost where you think it's a, a just delay to get you offside type play and then they're tossing it on a, on a sweep to Lamar Jackson with a well blocked play like that you that, know why I thought that you stop. know why I thought that was an excellent play. Because what they did was, you're exactly right, they wanted us to jump offside. Right. And once we realized that normally what happens is when you don't jump offside, you relax and say, hey, Just they're not, they, they not going to run a play. Right. And right when we thought they were they're not going to run, run a play, play. here's where they come around and ran a play and, and pitch it to Lamar Jackson. Right, I got to jump in real excellent quick. Excellent coaching on that. But here's, here's yeah. one thing, though. I got to tell you, as a fan, you, you know what I want to see? You know what I want to see? You know what I You know what I want to see, Hanford? I want to see more of what happened in your day and Bernie's day. You know well, what? He learned, uh, he learned those tricks from <laughs> but, us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know what? With Lamar Jackson's running, or I got to tell you, Joe Burrow, watch out. If you're running, I want Taki Taki or somebody take their head off. Hit those guys. You know, hit them hard. Oh, let's not call out uh, Joe Burrow just yet. We don't, <laughs> but, we don't you, need to you, incent that you, young man. No, to, but you know what? We don't. 481 yards yeah. yesterday. Nobody's <laughs> hit. Nobody hits like they used to. We are going to stick with the defense, guys. Okay, we have another play teed up for you here. Lamar to Bateman for a big play on third and 12. Okay, we, Browns get some pressure on Lamar by only rushing four. But how does Bateman get so open with seven defenders dropped into coverage? Let's take a look. See, here's the problem right here. I mean, we're rushing four guys, and when we're rushing four guys, we're banking on somebody getting to him because in the back end, we have a zone coverage. And when you give Lamar or any quarterback that much time, what's going to happen is somebody's burning, somebody's going to get open. Yeah, third, um, third and 11 like that. The, you, you can't really criticize Joe Woods on a third and 11, only rush four. And I say only rush four. That's when you have Miles Garrett and JV and Clowney, you should be able to rush four and collapse the pocket like that. You absolutely want more push in the middle of the pocket from your defensive tackles and stuff. But to Hanford, top dog, to your point, any NFL quarterback, especially Lamar Jackson, that's probably six to seven counts right there, six to seven seconds. Um, typically on a seven-step drop, you're banking on having no more than 3.4, 3.5 seconds. They have twice as much time there um, to allow the receiver to start on the top of the screen, <laughs> inside slot. Look, he's yeah. up there inside the 20. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Bernie, are you telling me, and, and I just want to make sure I'm hearing you right, are you telling me that angry Ken at quarterback yeah. We'll have enough time right here to find the, find a uh, receiver if, if, if this happens. Well, okay, I, we, I would say yes, you can find him, but to Lamar right, to, right. to Lamar's throw, right. man, that's actually a top tier right. throw because he ends up holding it for six and a half seven right. seconds, and then he has he has pressure in his face, and that's 
actually firing out a sidearm three quarter throw twenty some yards downfield was that pretty. I, I had to take. I had to take a shit. Since the angry kid is over there, you're beating up on us all the time. But, but you know what? I'm gonna beat up. I'm gonna beat up on you I, some more, Bernie. Come on, you're saying, all right, what? Well, it was a great play. Then what? Why were we calling that defense? They got six guys blocking on four. You look at our two ends. We're outside. There's no push up the middle. How did we even think we're going to stop that? Well, and and you could say we got to have push in the middle. We have had no push in the middle all year. Well, I have to say this too because you, what I did was I watched and um, this kid uh, that's called in the Wink Martindale is no longer their defensive coordinator. They have a kid named McDonald who's a defensive coordinator. And I'll I tell you what, I thought the kid, I, I, I used to get on him about certain things, but I thought yesterday he called a pretty good game because uh, after the second possession, what they did was they adjusted to us. And I saw him, he was starting to call Bernie a lot of run blitz. He was yeah. starting to run. Um, he had the run blitz. Because if you there. watched him several, several times, they tackle, uh, whether it was Hunt or Chubb, they were tackling him in the, um, in the backfield. And I, you, you know, I like to see um, a Woods uh, sometime dial up a little bit more blitzes and just go yeah, after these guys. A, you know, we talked about yeah. that last week in terms of the run blitzes. I hated seeing McDonald use that yeah. against us. Almost yeah. like he listened to the show yeah. and stuff. And even back to that last play. If you're going to rush four like that, a lot of things in the league, you see the two backers inside threatening the A gap yeah. to threaten a double blitz like that. Um, on ours there, we only had one backer um, over the center, yeah. not two in there threatening it. That doesn't force the line into any alternate changes, any alternate yeah. calls yeah. to possibly make them squeeze down to put um, Jadavian Clowney here at, or, and or Miles Garrett on one-on-ones outside. And by the way, uh, I played CYO seventh grade, very high level quarterback. <laughs> oh, kid, I, I'm an angry kid. I know it. I mean, I'm, I did tell you. Know. Did you spin that rock like Lamar right well, you there? Know, you yeah. can spin it. You All know, right, you hey, think, wait. That's why I said you, kid. I know you can spin it. You know. We made Ken smile. Yeah, we did. We did. Angry He's Ken. He's not about to explode anymore. You know. We needed that clarification. I knew you had some serious accolades, <laughs> angry Ken. Okay, we're gonna fast forward a little bit. So the game, once again, coming down to the wire. Browns get a turnover. This is a good chance for us to take advantage and go win the thing. We're going to look back at the offensive side here. Brissette to you DPJ. You know, and as you're getting it, that turnover, there's been a lot of flack on the defense. The, the Ravens actually could have ran the whole clock out, probably ran the whole – Right, uh, with, right. Uh, with that first down to force that turnover to put us in a – put in a position offensively to pull that game out was a was – a, it was a good opportunity. Yeah, we. I, I, I tell you what, you, Baltimore this year for some reason they've always been finding a reason to lose ball games, and uh, you could tell they were pretty upset when that when that happened. But boy, here's a play right here. Well, I thought we were really in business when DPJ caught this particular ball right here. And Bernie, I mean, that was a good throw, too. This is uh, third and five. and yeah. Third and five, and we were talking about how gorgeous the Lamar Jackson throw down the, the right sideline was. You know, Jedrick Wills doesn't do the best job at left tackle here, so there's not a lot of time here by Jacoby um, on his throw. You could tell he's starting to feel it as the season's coming on in terms of throwing fades. He, threw, he throws the one coming up later to Omari here, but this throw to DMP is just gorgeous. And on third and five, you don't throw these balls unless you really believe you're going to do this. So typically quarterbacks who don't believe in themselves, offenses who don't believe in themselves on third and three to five in the fourth quarter of a game, we're going to try a pick play, a gimmicky thing out in the flat, try to trick them. I'm um, a shovel pass, that type of garbage. You can't always trick people. Sometimes you have to flat out beat them. And this is uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones doing a great release, maybe getting a little too pressed to the sideline, but when you throw a perfect throw like that, that's just gorgeous. And I'm gorgeous. gonna and I'm gonna hit on this really quick. I mean, even though that's not where we were headed, but you're talking about uh, Jared Wills, number seventy-one. I just thought he had a horrible game yesterday. I mean, with the penalties and and constantly getting beat. And I like the kid too. The kid is from uh, obviously the University of Alabama, yeah. our first round pick. But he just couldn't get it done yesterday because if you look at Jacoby on that particular play, 
he had to get rid of that ball really, really quick. And, and, and I don't know, he probably felt the pressure coming from his blind side, but if he didn't get rid of that ball, that probably would have been a, a strip sack or something. Strip sack, yeah. d- decapitation. Yeah. Decapitation. Yeah. Yeah. Decapitation. Yeah. Worse, a fumble. Yeah. 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 <laughs> worse, than a de- yeah. worse than a decapitation and death is a fumble so, so, in a fourth So, quarter. Bernie, I got I to ask you this, because I think Jacoby Brissett, he's the nicest guy in the world. I don't think he's saying anything to Jedrick Wills. What were you saying to Doug Deacon on plays like that when he came around, when that guy got you on the blind side? <laughs> I, 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 love, I, love, I, love, I love Deke. I, I, think, I think partly why I'm so healthy is Deke was already in the radio booth yeah, by, yeah, that, yeah, 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 by yeah. that point. But, you know, the, the, that's not an effort thing from Jedrick Wills or from the offensive yeah. lineman at that point. They're not, if it was an effort thing, I don't think – you would lose your mind on that. That's more of a performance execution thing. But that's during the game, that's not usually the time to address that stuff. Yeah. And that stuff's addressed. Um, I try not to address it like Tom Brady did last week. And, and I said that uh, Jerry Wills didn't have a great game, but I'm telling you, I, I like the kid. He's, he, mm-hmm. he gets out there, he competes, he fights every single play, and uh, I think he's going to be a great tackle for us. I mean, obviously, do I want to get rid of him? No. Do I want to keep him there? Absolutely, mm-hmm. because I think he's definitely going to get the job done. It's just yesterday he was having some problems. Yeah, you Bernie, you were him. saying not the right place to do it on the field. After the game ends, everyone's saying – this team is yelling at each other, going crazy in the locker room. What do you guys feel about that? Is that something that you guys would do, go at it in the locker room back and forth to try to get on the same page? Or what well, are your, what well, are your we thoughts? We were usually on the same yeah. page because it didn't linger. Yeah. Now, we just went at it right away. Yeah. It could have been right on the field. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we joked last week, but it was it was serious. If the offense blew a couple three and outs yeah, and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were rocking yeah, yeah. off the field getting yelled yeah, at or yeah. vice versa. <laughs> right. It didn't happen a lot, but if you got toasted, absolutely. Or, you know, you were, absolutely. we were saying, come on, defense, you got to make a play, you know. The, so that it happened. That happened um, almost immediately. I'm not saying that was right either, but because we're brothers, yeah. because we spent so much time respect. together, there was all that respect, and yeah. we did it. To each other. It yeah. wasn't all uh, to others. It, it was that respect from each other. I, I mean, obviously, I could take it from them. They could take it from me. And that's just the way we did it. But these guys, uh, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. You got all of them calling each other out. Uh, Johnson's com- coming out saying, hey, the guys are not spending enough time uh, uh, getting prepared, being a pro. You got to know how, what it is, what it takes to be a pro. So, I don't know. It was. I, I would love to have been in that locker room just to see them react. I'd like to, to see uh, who did yeah, what because yeah, in those yeah. moments, in those moments, who's yelling and who's really yelling and who it really means to. It comes across, and then who's just yelling to make noise and look good because it's on camera and so there's people within the organization kind of watching. You know, there's yeah. kind of fake yelling, and yeah. then there's guys who really yell. Passionate. And then there's some guys that may kill you if yeah. you answer it That's wrong. right. That's and right. And those guys I st- I want to yeah. be with. And, yeah. dog, yeah. I want to ask you this thing for, for us to talk about today. And I'm not um, – to that point of yelling and, and it being genuinely sick that you lost. And, and I'm not just saying this to be uh, theatrical, um, to be a drama queen, to be an actor and stuff. But a lot of times when you do your post-game press conferences, you're, people say, yeah, you're doing it for the media, you're doing it for the fans. I learned from an awesome Jimmy Johnson. I was the only guy to be with him at the U, at the Dallas Cowboys, and then at the Miami Dolphins. And Jimmy Johnson used to do his post-game press conferences, and it was flat out talking to us players, his coaches, and the organization. And his press conferences had a purpose towards – um, his team and his players, just like, and I learned from that. So Hanford, when I was playing, I keep saying when I was playing, mm-hmm. when I was playing, and I'm doing that post game press conference, yeah. and you lost after a game. There was a message to be showed, not just to the fans, to your teammates, to your players, to your coaches, how much it meant. And you know, I, I don't want to use really bad language here, and I'm not saying this to be dramatic and stuff. But I wanted to friggin' die. Yeah. I wanted to effing die if I was out there. And that you, it came across. And if I, you know, if I was 
22 for 27 yesterday, 258, and yeah. I kind of had a, yeah. a really big, a kind of a good game like that. Well, That's one of the yeah, things, time, yeah, where I think yeah, you want to yeah. make a well, real point of how hurt you are so that your other players, your other guys, yeah. the other coaches know how much it means. And, and I'm going to say this real quick because I know we got to move on, but it's just like uh, Jacoby Brissett. I mean, I'm starting to like the kid. But for him to get up there and it just seemed like he's smiling and, and, and you, you just don't do that. I mean, we just lost a big, big ball game. I mean, come on. I mean, you, the, there's got to be some emotions exactly like you said somewhere, and I just don't see it with yeah, a lot and, of these And guys. for the listeners out there and for the young people out there, when you're doing these interviews and when you're talking and stuff, please trust me, it's not easy. We all have some anxiety. We all yeah. have some nerves. Yeah. And sometimes in nervousness, I've done things, I'll say stupid things, yeah, yeah. or you do things like even when you're sad, you maybe laugh, you try to act, and, and you, you, you come off with an, a, a calmness or a, a type of levity that you really don't mean. But there, there's times when other people and younger players, we're the youngest football team in the NFL yeah. right now, from the coaching perspective, from a player perspective, there's people watching us. We so, need to be on our game. So, Bernie, know? two final questions in wrapping this all up. And, and uh, I, I, you know, I think Stefanski's a, a nice guy, great guy. I didn't mean to poke fun at him with the lack of emotion. Oh, I know no, he's trying to yeah. cover up everybody. Yeah. But let's just talk about again a lot. A lot of fans second guessing the calls. So we're it's coming down to crunch time. You think you lost the game, but all of a sudden we get the turnover. We drive it down. It's just about two minutes. I think ten seconds to go. Third and two. We're in field goal range. Everybody's thinking we're going to hand the ball off to Chubb. That's what we expect to do. But Bernie, I know you like that fade down the right side, and we threw it down. Amari Cooper touchdown. No wait penalty. Do you like the call there? Because I know I don't, and the fans don't. Well, in retrospect, because it didn't work, you don't like the right. call. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. I I do like third and two, second and one bombs and stuff. When I know I could go for it on fourth down. One of the, my cardinal rules, me and Hanford were talking about some of the other games where in the fourth quarter, if you have an opportunity to go up two scores, you, you always go do. up yeah. two scores. If you have an opportunity in the fourth quarter to two tie the game and or take a lead you have to tie the game yeah. and or take a lead so um the atlanta falcons game we got the ball down to like the 40 41 yard line then we threw the ball a couple times uh the la chargers we got the ball down to the 36 yard line then we an outside run, run lost a couple then threw the ball here we got the ball about inside the 30 had a chance to move it up and then run the clock down to th make sure Lamar Jackson doesn't get um, more time left because there was two minutes and 25 <laughs> seconds to go when we made that throw. So it, it, I would have tended to run that ball yeah. there to make yeah. it a yeah. better statistical yeah. There you go. Goal. Yeah. There you go. And I, more importantly, oh. I wanted to run the clock down. I didn't there want to get go. Lamar Jackson yeah. two yeah. minutes to go. So yeah. in hindsight... And at that time, yeah, I would have done that switch, just like, just like the the Chargers game and the Falcons yeah. game. All right, want to have that. And stuff I'll back. say this, okay, real quick. For you, you got uh, you got a guy who's averaging five point seven yards a carry. Okay. And uh, you go ahead and run that football. You run that football after you get the first down. You still have time. You still if may you, run if you, you want to. If you want to take a shot like in the that, end zone, yeah. you still have time for that. All right. So and, then, and you still actually with two minutes to go and some tight timeouts, you actually still have time to run it the whole way in. You really you have your there whole you your whole Play, gambit yeah. of offense so at then, your go. disposal. So then it leads us to the final point, and I got to throw in. I was a very high level CYO seventh grade kicker, and I know that you. Snap the ball seven yards back, but no, we decide we're going to be smarter than anybody in the history of football, and we're only going to snap it six yards on a 61-yard field goal that's going to have to have low trajectory. We're thinking, oh, my gosh, this is going to get blocked, and sure enough, it gets blocked. Hanford, how, how do you explain that? You can't. I, I mean, and, and that yard makes a difference. I mean, it really makes a difference because you got those guys that are coming off both ends, and you got those guys coming up the middle. middle. And when they come up the middle, they got those big paws, as I, I call I can them. do the math uh, right yeah, now yeah. on the elevation <laughs> yeah. of the ball that uh, needs that you extra need yard that slash extra three yard, angry back. kid. That's a reason for you to explode because I am too <laughs> about to explode. You know, though, I got a, multiple points there. Of all the years of being an addict watching football, I've never seen 
that where uh, the, the kicker actually points it and goes from the 61 to the 60 and moves it up that <laughs> yard like that. And um, as I was watching that and, and running that scenario in my head and almost in disbelief of, of thinking about the center of the pocket of, uh, of it getting deflected like that, I couldn't still help but feel sorry for myself and our team for that horrible um, illegal procedures call to make it go back five oh, yards. That, yeah, was, yeah. That, there was, that was phantom movement yeah, there. And I'm yeah, not yeah. trying to be a homer on, on that call, but that, that dissertation that the, yeah. uh, that the refs gave as to why that, that was um, a penalty on us was, was unacceptable. Hey, Bernie, would you like to see some emotion out of Stefanski when there's a, a blatant call like that that's missed? Or do you do you not mind the stoic kind of emotionless on the sideline during the game? During the game, and um, from an emotional standpoint, from the coach, I didn't um, necessarily need that nor want that. I did. I I do like that though in strategic times in our meetings, yeah. in our in our locker room, and and certainly on the practice field. When it's just us, sometimes the the yelling when the cameras and all the people around is a little bit of uh, theatrics and stuff. But when you when it's just us, when we're just in the locker room, we we've had some mouth yeah. comments ourselves <laughs> on things. But it's just us that has a lot more effect, and then you you see the genuineness of well, it. Well, I'm sitting here laughing because I told you guys before. I remember when Marty Schottenheimer came in there and he said, "Every damn body out of this." damn room except Hanford Dixon. And, uh, and, uh, and I knew then, I knew then I was in trouble. I said, no, can you guys stay, please? Don't leave me alone with this damn man. So what did he say? Ken, I can't say it. He can't say it. Ken, I can't say it. Ken, I, four letter Ken, words. Ken, Ken, let's just say, let's just say all I did was say, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. I'll just say that, okay? Yeah, I think the emotion thing is an interesting point because obviously it's different. But with baseball, I swear when Tito gets fired up, it, mm. it rallies the troops. So yeah. I don't know. I guess it's one of those yeah, to I, each his own. But. Yeah, and, and you see certain things like a, a third and one, a fourth and one, crucial situations. When you have that strategically emotion, um, us players, I know we say we're professional, but again, we're the youngest team in the yeah. league. We're 24, 25, 26 years old. We respond to emotion. Gotta now, sometimes we respond negatively to emotion, but we're playing a physical game where you got to stop a 220 pound man uh. running a 4 5 40. Yeah. You got to stop him <laughs> in the A gap, and you need him to go backwards, not you. Yeah. You need some emotion. You gotta need go that get fire him. in your belly. Got to go get him. All right, guys, time to look forward because we do have that primetime game in. Cleveland Halloween night against the Bengals and hopefully it's not a scary time but I know it is Halloween and it's the Browns so this could be very on brand but hopefully not Angry Ken is actually going to get us started with our old school segment with our upcoming opponent well you know what it used to be you never came into the Cleveland Stadium and thought it was going to be easy they were afraid to come in and I'm taking you back to the old school days because these are the days when the dog pound would go nuts as a matter of fact, the Bengals were one of those teams that, for whatever reason, we had their number. They didn't want to get pelted by the dog bones, and they didn't want to get hit by the batteries. And they had that coach, Sam White, who was a legendary coach. I know you guys played against him. I think we got that picture up there right now. But there, for those of you that don't know, it was such an intense place to play. And we would have that number of the Bengals time and time again. And this is what we as fans remember. There was a game in Cincinnati where the fans in Cincinnati didn't like the call. They were pelting the refs with some snowballs. And Sam White grabbed the mic Microphone. I don't know how he did this. And in front of 60,000 people at that stadium in Cincinnati said, you live in Cincinnati. You don't live in Cleveland. What are you and, doing? He, and I'll tell you what, guys. What, it was tough to play back in those days in stadium, wasn't it? Big dog, we didn't play. We didn't play. You didn't come in our house. You didn't come yeah, in our no, house. It was actually, it was fun. That Battle of Ohio back then didn't matter whether it was, was our their house or, or, what, their house. or what they thought was we their house. We were still beat their butts, you know. We confiscated that. <laughs> that Battle of Ohio was fun back then because it was a... It was a Cleveland Fest well, back then. And, and Bernie, you had their number. In fact, I think one of your greatest statistical games is, is this one right here. We blew the Bengals out. I think on this day you threw for four touchdowns. You had a passer rating of about 130. Pull it up. Let me see. Let's see it. I think this is Webstar. Webstar at the top. 
You can Watch this. Release. Look at the field. Look at that that mud spray painted green. <laughs> Not that I want to over talk about this, but this is um, we were talking about how Jacoby's getting a feel for throwing his fades. This was my old audible in the old days, where you could slip Webster a a quick fist, which was give him the rock to throw a takeoff down there. But that was my question: Was that a play called in the huddle, or did you audible? That was an audible. Okay. okay. Yeah. When you see when you see the cornerbacks get that far inside you, in that squad, and, he's, prote- and not even he's by himself. At me, he is completely he's protecting the inside. Yeah, that's a day he should have stayed in bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It, it wasn't was not going to be his day. <laughs> it, 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 it was, well, let's watch it one more time here on on this great play. And again, four touchdowns, one legendary play. Look at all those. Banners in the background too. Oh. It was such a tough place to play. All right, let's. Yeah, flip. there wasn't the rough in the quarterback. No like rough in the quarterback, but I'll tell you what. But you know, wait, before you get on it, you know, when you play the Bengals like this, whether it was we joked about, yeah. whether growing up in a Youngstown, where it's playing the Steelers or playing the Bengals, um, the Battle of Ohio, the, our, our division and stuff. These games really t- meant a lot, and to that element of emotion, to where emotion could. You want to have control within your emotion, but that element of emotion really does take you to another level of that. And when you're playing a game like this and playing a team that is um, coming in unfortunately yeah. hot like this now, yeah. and we're not, and we may be having some doubt in, in ourself and our self confidence and our self esteem, that type of emotion and realizing the magnitude of a game like this, you have to get yourself fired up for these type of moments. Well, you know what? And in those days, the defense just play after play, Hanford. You and Frank Minifield, two greatest cornerbacks in the history. But watch this one right here. This is a great tip play. Pick off by Clay Matthews rumbling down the side. But watch up at the top because he laterals it, and Hanford's going to come running in on the top with the towel. Top dog, you know what, There's top dog blocking you, you three, four, what, that's, five that's big guys. Daddy, big daddy. <laughs> and, and if you watch that, I came from the opposite side of the field. And watch me just show that speed coming there look out of look nowhere. At, look, 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 look at the uh, towel. Look at yeah, he hits one, you know, boom, look at two, that. three, look four, there. five, and I then takes what, out his and, own and, guy. And then I actually, yeah, I think I actually tripped uh, Big Daddy, so he let me know that because he would have scored if I wouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but you know, let me hey, tell don't you. mess this up with the facts now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's. <laughs> hey, we do love our clay. The clay Look at that started. long towel, Mike. Yeah. You, you see that you towel? Know, right? I want to talk about that towel because <laughs> the emotion was so great in this town back in those days. And it was plays like this that we would just run in the backyard over and over again. And you, fans, you would drive around town. You'd see little kids in their yard with towels hanging out of their pants <laughs> playing it. Hanford, you invented the towel. Hey, had to have it. I had to have it. it was superstitious. If I didn't have that same long towel, and, and don't go in my locker and oh, mess with that towel. Oh, don't touch that locker. Don't exactly. touch that locker. It was very, very super. But I'll tell you this. I, Bernie, I remember when we played, uh, we were playing the Bengals and Minifield and I, Chris Collinsworth, you, you know oh, you know God. Chris really well. Yeah. And Chris, uh, Chris came across the middle. Frank and I hit him. Yeah, don't go across and, the middle of you and guys. And then we start dancing around him. And you know, Chris, we see him today. He gives us a hard time about that. He had, he said, hey, that was almost 40 years yeah, ago, yeah, and he's, yeah, still, he's yeah, still pissed at yeah. you for that. Man. All right, so a challenge out to any of those defensive backs, because we know the Cleveland Browns are watching. One of you guys has to bring a towel out. That's, on Monday night football, bring the hand for Dixon towel out. Before I throw it back to Gabby to go over the Bengals in the little scouting report, we just got some breaking news from our Cracker Jack staff here at the Big Play Network. David Njoku out two to five weeks. Wow. You know, I kind of knew that. Well, I didn't know he was going to be out, but I knew it was a tricky situation because you and I, we talked about that ankle. That could be really, really serious. So hopefully it's more like two and not like five. He's but having an all-pro pro, all all pro pro season. Yeah. Yeah, Great job, David. Get well. Yeah. That, those high ankle sprains tend to, be, tend to be longer than shorter. And, and I want to concur with you and say yeah. we want it on the two-week side of it. Yeah. The issue, though, too, is sometimes we're so, we need to be protected from ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes with those type of issues, sometimes we come back too, too quick, fast, yeah. and then it becomes a rest of the season type yeah. lingering. And yeah. instead of running those four fives, you're running a four seven <sighs> five, and instead of having that real base under your backside to for yeah, blocking and leverage, um, like on that power row that we showed earlier in the podcast, 
Um, David Njoku, he's not pulling on that. The tight end has the end man on the line of scrimmage, the defensive end. That's a tall order for tight ends to do, and, mm -hmm. and he's been able to masterfully not only catch the ball this year, but his blocking has been impeccable. All right, so we are going to preview this week. Browns are 7-3 and three versus the Bengals since 2017, but Joe Burrow and his guys coming off some serious momentum. Just like we did last week, we're doing a new thing. We're going to break down our little scouting report, see, see what the Bengals' formations are all about um, how they're lining up, what we can do well on offense and defense. So we've got a, our first play teed up for you guys to break down for us. Burrow to D Jamar Chase. This is a touchdown right here. Yeah, Joe Burrow has yet to beat the Cleveland Browns in his uh, short career here. That should be, a, should be a real positive. I think, though, with the way he is as a competitive, awesome player, though, that's going to be something that resonates within him and he's going to want to break that streak um this week um he has awesome weapons i mean last week he was 34 34 for 42 481 yards three touchdowns and here he is thrown to the number one pick here javar chase he was he's exceptional he had eight catches last week 130 yards and two touchdowns um, look at the press coverage against Javar Chase. Uh, that is a mess, and you're going to get a dose Hanford. of fades, fades on this. How yeah. do we stop that on Monday well, night? Well, here's the problem is you, we have a law firm coming in here, and Chase Boyd and Higgins, that's the <laughs> name of the law firm coming in here, oh. and you better believe they are going to be ready. I think he had... A couple of guys that was over 100 yards. Yeah, maybe. Boyd, Boyd was eight catches, 155 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, and we're going to need, uh, uh, Gabby, to answer your question, we're going to need everyone. We're going to need absolutely everyone. Uh, Denzel Ward is to have to come out uh, concussion protocol because there's no way. He's got to play this week against the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. And hopefully, hopefully now, my understanding is they may have a, uh, a little problem with uh, uh, Chase uh chipped a little hamstring or something, so hopefully he's not going to play because we don't need to see him, Bernie. Yeah, I don't want to wish any injuries, any yeah. b misfortune on any players, but yeah, him missing this game or being slowed up would, would yeah. massively help. Having yeah. the Monday night game and him having an extra 30 hours to heal uh, helps him a little bit, but that's, that's absolutely an issue. Well, let me say this. I want something to be wrong with him. I want him to just miss our game, but I want him to be able to play next week, the following week. I want him yeah. to be able to play against whoever else they're playing with. Just miss our game so yeah. we don't have to go against well, them. Well, <laughs> you, you, you said it with Denzel getting out of uh, concussion protocol. Denzel's had yeah. an exceptional – uh, streak against Chase. He had the the, the 99 yard pickoff for a touchdown last year in Cincinnati. Um, he's had good success set, uh, shutting him down. We absolutely need that, but really we got to get our pass rush. Uh, the the Bengals offensive yeah. line, unfortunately, is getting a little better, but yeah. that is not the strength of their team. Joe yeah. Burrow's taking a lot of hits. Yeah. Um, he, they're getting a little bit of. They're getting in sync, unfortunately, but we got to keep pressure on him well Gabby their defense is playing pretty good too yeah we want to well we also want to break down their defense and some of the weaknesses too big play Dave has got us teed up with a look at a Mariota touchdown pass to Bird look at this boy I tell you look we want to know what happened with the Bengals secondary yeah here. I think the corner what he did he squatted on the route up there because you're going to see they they gave us in the in, in the initial they gave us like they were in a two safety like a cover seven a uh, two safe see how you have the two safeties yeah, look like so they're going to play the, deep but then right when the, the ball snapped the, the safety on the left he is not going to move, meaning that he is not playing the deep outside, deep half of the field. Sure. So the corner has the deep half. So what the corner must do, we can't see the route, but he must have ran like an out and up or just a straight hook and go or something like that where the corner squatted on it. And you can see he is just wide open here. Yeah, and I got to say, this is one of my favorite routes for a cover four beater. So... The Cincinnati Bengals are playing more press man coverage than most teams we play. So we'll get more man coverage and press than we have lately. This is not press man coverage. This is rush three spy watching, uh, watching the quarterback there. But this is a cover four. And when you have two receivers to the top of the screen like this, the number two receiver, inside receiver here to the top, you look at how he releases up the field. That holds the inside safety to the top of the, to the, top of the field. That makes him stay flat-footed. The safety takes him, leaving the corner 
with outside technique to cover the post route to the outside receiver. So actually, that's why that's why this is a really good route to route beater for cover and, four when you have and, when you have an outside receiver. And here's fast. the problem with the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, obviously uh, their defense. I mean, we could score some points on them, but their offense is so potent. I mean, they, they score so many points. It, it's it's going to be hard to outscore them to keep up with them as far as uh, trying to outscore them. Right. I mean, that's. That's actually yeah. why when you look at Cincy, why it was such a for sure pick in the over yeah. with them last week, too. How do you guys expect the Browns to respond in a primetime game? Do you think that'll play a role? I think it will. I, I, I think it will. Uh, these guys, uh, they just have to uh, take the responsibility. And we talked about it last uh, last week. I mean, everyone's just got to look each other themselves in the mirror and say, how can I help this team get better? And they got to do the necessary things during the week to uh, help the team get better. If that means watching more film, if that means spending a little bit more extra time on the practice field, you just got to do the little things in order. Because there's a lot of talent. We have a lot of talent on this team, too. Yeah, yeah hey, hell yeah, it makes a difference playing on these primetime games. <laughs> yeah. You, It needs yeah. to make a difference. Yeah. You're the only guy playing. I mean, yeah. we said it last week when I was – again, I hate to keep saying about ourselves and – Sound like an egotist and stuff, but when you're the only quarterback playing, yeah. when you're the only yeah. cornerback yeah. covering out yeah. there, you know the everybody else in the league is watching you. You don't want to be it. You yeah. don't want to suck in front of everybody <laughs> out there. You want to go make yeah. a friggin' difference. And, and what they have, Gabby, they have their whole. All the families are looking. They have, uh, you know, their universities, people they went to school with. Everybody's watching them on prime time, and they want to make a good impression. They want to show them that they can still play. Yeah, and I mean, our, our guys, I know we want to do that we got it want to get that taste out of our mouth when and and one of the things too i think that kind of comes out of, of kind of a big game like that was like last week talking about how the players are fighting after the game and stuff they know they're going to be talking about uh, it. they know that uh, that'll be a topic of conversation all through the week how are you going to respond how are you going to um play and how are you going to handle it you don't want to be the guy that looks like you're loafing or took it off right. took plays off well, and you know what? As fans, we got to bring it too. We want to make it loud. This is our chance to showcase the nation. Get rid of the elf. Put the dog back you got there. It. Let's bark. <laughs> Let's go crazy. This is the dog pound fans. You got to bring it like you never brought it before. All right. That takes us into one of our favorite spots. Uh, Times in the show, which is our betting section. You guys are on a roll. Yes. The big plays of the week. You guys are so hot. Let's keep it going. Our one-star game this week is the Steelers at the Eagles. Who saw this coming with the Eagles? Eagles given 10 and a half. What do you say, Hanford? Boy, they are hot right now. I think they're the only still the undefeated, only undefeated team in the uh, league right now. Um uh, Boy, I, those Steelers are playing extremely well. I think they've found themselves. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go with the Eagles on this one. That ten and a half feet. Well, even though last week I took the Steelers again, and they people said they lost the game, but they won the cover. Yeah, they're gonna win the cover yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. they won the cover for all you people that didn't have a good Sunday between one and four, and you listened to the yeah. the Steelers making the cover last night. <laughs> See, you know what? That's why you watch the show, folks, because these guys know when to cover, when not to cover, over under. That's why they're so hot. Let's take it to the three star. The Ravens, we got enough of those Ravens. They're going to Tampa Bay and Tampa Brady. Wow, what's going on over in Tampa Bay, Bernie? Buccaneers minus one and a half. Yeah, to see to see the way uh, not just Tom Brady is playing, but the whole team is playing. the the lack of the lack of belief in themselves, the mistakes they're yeah. making. They actually look slow. Yeah, actually slow. I mean, I'm a. I'm they look a, old too. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> not, and not just t- talking from Tom's perspective. Yeah. You know, without Gronk in the red zone, um, Mike Evans uh, dropped a big pass this past week. Um, he's not getting the separation like like he was. That's a it's a tough one. And but I'm still a Tom Brady guy, and I'm I'm thinking. I'm hoping, and, and I'm with with my heart, hoping Baltimore gets a loss. <laughs> 
I'm gonna go with the Ravens. I think the I, I, I think the Ravens are gonna. Uh, I, I, I agree with you, but I just think they found themselves with this uh, win against us, and I think they'll uh, handle uh, Tampa Bay. Well, you know what, Tampa Bay season's uh, on the brink. They got to come up with something, and Tom gave up a lot to come back this year. So, come Including on, Tampa. In divorce, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that takes us to our five-star, and I know you guys don't like being put on the spot with the Brownies, but we also have some breaking news from our Cracker Jack staff. Lamar Chase has a hip injury, and that was what sidelined him uh, coming into this game, and he may have tweaked it. They said it was non-contact yesterday, day-to-day. It's the Bengals minus uh, three at the Browns on Monday Night Football, Bernie. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I want to be a complete <laughs> homer. I want to. Say, I want to hear this one. I yeah. wait to hear this one. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I love our Browns. I love everything that's done for me, but I love Joe Burrow, and I. I this is a over and over game. And, this is a tough one. I'm going. I don't think it's that tough if for I, you. I think if you, I have to, if I have to bet, I'm taking you over the Bengals. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If I could hedge my bet and stay on the fence, my Pinocchio nose will grow longer. Oh, hey, so you it's, guys know you know my crush. Oh, yeah, on Joe yeah, Burrow. yeah, yeah. So it's a hip and not a hamstring. Okay, okay, but still, I well, I, I, I think he did tweak his hamstring okay. too. Okay. But In still, fairness. the Bengals. I, I mean, those guys, they are just, uh, I think they finally found themselves. So got, I hate to do this, like you said, but uh, the Bengals. I'm going with the Bengals. All right, fans, see the chain? Monday Night Football? <laughs> Browns <laughs> win! Oh! Browns win! Oh! Angry Ken's head oh! will not explode next week. You saw it right here. Angry yeah. Ken, are you, are you drinking on the air yeah, or something? I, I mean, like, I'm I'm been it. It. I mean I've been season, hitting the head. Like, where season. the hell does that stuff come out of your mouth from? Our season's on the break. What the hell are you talking right, about over maybe there? Maybe I'm hoping. Maybe I'm you hoping. You have a lost your mind. Oh, no wonder you're win. so angry. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping for a win. I'm hoping for a win back to you. All right, we are going to wrap it up with our two-minute Warning, you guys can talk about anything you want. Uh, preview. Also, Cavs won their home opener yesterday. That was pretty nice. We saw Spider Mitchell in action. Boy, the Cavs are yeah. playing well. And Mitchell, I mean, what he, what does he score? Like 30-something points, I think, uh, in an overtime win. Uh, and I'm a little bit disappointed. I wanted to uh, say congratulations to those Guardians, uh, even though they yeah. didn't uh, – make it past the Yankees. Uh, they still, I think, had a great, great year. You talk about a lot of young players. They also have a lot of young uh, we have three. We have the three yeah. youngest sports franchises in, in North America. Yeah, and <laughs> real quick, getting to uh, our beloved Cleveland Browns. Come on, guys, let's get this thing together. Let's get this thing together. Let's let's turn this season around. Still, it's not, all is not lost yet, even though we've lost four in a row. There's still time to turn it around. Yeah, you know what? An amazing quick shout-out. I love our Guardians and what they did for us this year. So with the Cavaliers and the season that we're about to uh, start out with, with the getting our, our season home opener winner there with the, with the Cavs. But from a Browns perspective, we got a national, national game, Monday Night Football. We talk about um, uh, being the only game in town, the last game of the week. It's, it's Halloween. They're coming into town. It's the Battle of Ohio. Ooh. I can't stand saying that we're 2-5 and five right now. You know, that's going to be a festive attitude, a festive atmosphere. I hope Cleveland is absolutely rocking. But from a player perspective, the fighting that we had at the end of the last game, let's use that fighting, let's use that emotion constructively to focus and know what the hell we're doing this week and be ready to come out because the Bengals aren't they aren't going to let this game slip away from us. They're not going to take us for granted. Hey, BK, it's been uh, another good show, but I have a question for you. Are you gonna dress up at Halloween? Yeah, I did a little. I I did a little <laughs> skit with a friend of mine, Austin Love, at Channel Three. So he's got a little something coming out on that this Monday. For Good me. show, my friend. God bless you, brother. You, boop, 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 boop. Go Browns! You matter. <laughs> I'm Angry Ken, and this is my rant. In 55 years of watching the Browns, 
I think I've seen it all. But, you know, yesterday takes the cake. Just when I think I've got the victory chain for good, I got to take it off. It comes down to the end of the game. It's third and two. We're just going to run the ball right, Coach Stefanski. Hand it off to Chubb. Run the clock. Do not give Lamar time. But, no, we're going to outsmart ourselves again. We're in field goal range. Brissett back to pass. I know my friend Bernie Kozar loves that pass down the right side. Oh, no, I can't watch. Quake Cooper's got it. Right side. Touchdown. First thing that goes through my mind, do we have too much time on the clock? Wait, penalty flag. It's got to be roughing the passer, right? Nope. Nope. It's Amari Cooper with a push-off that I haven't seen been called before. But okay. So now we got to line up for the 56-yard field goal. Uh Uh-oh, Ravens jump offside. Now it's going to be fourth and one. What do we do now? Are we going to run? Are we going to go? Oh, hold on a second. Harbaugh talks the refs out of it. Now the Browns have to line up for a 61-yard field goal. No, wait. We're going to outsmart ourselves again. Coach says move it one yard closer. In my entire history of watching football, I've never seen you try and move a field goal from seven yards to six yards on the snap to the holder. Okay, I'm praying, please, please, please. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up. It's blocked. It's blocked. It's blocked. What could Coach Stefanski possibly say in his post-game conference? Really disappointing and frustrating. I am a robot. We've got to find ways to win, and we didn't do it today. I have no emotion because that's the way I coach. My team has no emotion. They work their tails off. We've got to do a better job. It's so frustrating. I have no pulse. You know what, Coach? I know it seems like I'm taking a slam on you. You seem like a bright guy. You seem like a smart guy. If somebody would have told you we're holding Lamar Jackson to 9 of 16 for 120 yards, 59 yards rushing, five sacks, Mark Andrews, No yards catching. We win, right? Especially after we come out strong. We run Nick Chubb. Six out of the first 11. We score a touchdown. We do it again on the second drive. Field goal then. Punt. 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 You know what it is? We can't control the games. We get away from our strengths. This is where we need leaders. We put ourselves in a position to sort of win, but then we don't. We just wait for something bad to happen. Good teams expect to win. We just hope to win. And I got to say, as a fan, I don't expect to win. I hope to win. We've lost by three, three, two, and one, our four games. To me, that's coaching. You think the Bengals are afraid coming to Cleveland to face our vaunted Browns defense? We are on the brink of a disaster. I want passion. I want emotion. I want us to tear the Bengals apart. So you know what? I've got an idea. We are going to change the elf to a dog on the middle of the field. And I want us barking. I want us screaming. I want those dog bones in the stand. We need to show America on Monday night who we are. We're the dog pound. We need to be louder. We need to be rowdier. We need to be tougher than we've been all year. We need Chick Chubb to run it down their throats. We need Miles Garrett for a sack. Tacky, tacky, take Joe Burrow's head off. Jadavian Clowney, you got to be there. And Bengals do not come into our house and think you win on Monday night. We need to win. I expect to win. And you know what? I predict it. We will win. I'm Angry Ken, and that's my rant.